Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity, guys. Uh, time for a small update about a couple of the systems and, and how I feel about them and what I found out so far in the game. And also, I think I think it's a place to begin with. Um, game-breaking bug. Completely. Well, I don't know if it's game-breaking, but it's definitely fucked up. Uh, pretty, pretty seriously. I did not find this. Friends of mine found it. And um, there's actually two things that, I, that were found so far. One of them is that if you double click something instead of drag it to equip, all of your passive abilities and stuff like that will get removed. Now that's 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 fucked up. So so let's let's just try this. I haven't actually tried this, but yeah. You could see that my defenses went down when I did that. All of my defenses my my actual defenses went down. It was 144 and it went down to 129. So that's one thing that's fucked up. Let's load. That's one thing that's fucked up and shouldn't be. Uh, it's rather game breaking. You you lose some of your passive abilities, according to what I understand, and that's that's pretty pretty terrible and game breaking. However, there's also another one that's even worse. Um, again, we're at 144. Okay, so if I just put this here, it won't go down. It went down just because I double clicked. Um, so another thing that's fun. 144 is the number, which is very, very high. You might be wondering, how the hell did I manage to get 144 on Eddie, which pretty much means he's kinda invulnerable. Well, saving the game, note that I am, it's quick save is fine, note that I'm in Gilded Vale, which is where you get that character. And if I load the game now, and that's all it takes, you save the game at the place that you, where you got the character, you load the game, and guess what happens? The passive abilities, or some of them at least, get reapplied. And now, we're at 166. And I could keep doing this. Quick save. Quick load. You just wait. And now it'll be 188. Which pretty much puts me at... <laughs> I don't take damage. Um, ever. Now... I just came here in order to test this. Uh, I just came over to test this to see if it actually screws up. My original save, where I am right now in the game, um, I only have 100 defense, on 100 deflection on Edir. I do not know the amount of times where I actually did this. I definitely don't intend to use it, but I'm pretty sure it happened at least once or twice, which means I am more powerful than I should be, which uh, is pretty... <laughs> and would very much at least explain how really, really, really strong Edir has become. I mean, really, I've been playing one Protect 4, where Edir goes up and engages like 16 things, everybody's around them trying to kill him, and the rest of my party, it just Edir's like over here fighting 16 things, and they're like in a line behind him shooting very slowly and killing stuff that way. So that would explain why Edir is so powerful. Um, and yeah, this is, this is kind of fucked up, uh, I have to say, and this is where it was. So, that's, th those are two game-breaking bugs. Both of them you wouldn't even notice, and it'll kind of break your game. Now that you know about them, some of you might decide to use them, which is pretty terrible. Y you will use the positive one, which is pretty terrible. Hopefully the rest of you, also, you won't use the bad one, or it won't do the bad one. Don't double-click, always drag. I'm used to dragging. I've never done this because I'm so used to dragging from Baldur's Gate um, and from Infinity Engine, which, I don't know, I just drag and I don't double-click in this game. Um, but, yeah, don't do that. And uh, if you want, it, it applies, according to what I understand, to the passive abilities of every character in the map where you got that character. I'm playing the Steam version, um, hopefully a patch will come and we'll fix all of these issues, which is not cool. I've heard of others, but I've heard that there are others, but I don't know of them, but these are definitely the big ones that are kind of grain breaking and it kind of sucks. In any case, let's move on to less terrible things, less game breaking bugs. Finished Redrick's Hold, it was incredibly easy because everything, because I just used the incredible tactic of door where Edir stands at the door, and that's it. And there are lots of people trying to kill him, but he's at the door, and everybody else is behind, and he doesn't actually die, because he just holds the line forever, and that's it. <laughs> that was the entire tactic 
that I employed pretty much killing every single person in Reddick's Hold except for the priest that you talk to and get a quest from. Except for that guy, I murdered every single person in Reddick's Hold. Everybody. And I didn't have to, but I did. Uh, for the loot, mainly. Um, I also got my the Stronghold, which I have to say is really cute. It feels like a little bit like a Civ game, where... A little bit like a Civ game where you have your stuff and you, you just make sure, oh, something happened, enough time passed, and uh, not a Civ game, but like some kind of, of cute little little thing. Um, and it's, it's nice. I like it. It's cute. It could have more things. I especially like the fact that you have uh, like actions where if you have companions that are there currently, I only have five, all the companions that I've met are with me, but if you send them over there, then they could do quests to gain experience and items, which is very nice gives them something to do and uh, this is this is a really cute little system that you can you always have it only has two stats prestige and, and security but it's a nice start and it could always be bigger and more serious and you could always do more things with it and i i really like this system and i think it's it's really cool that's one thing another thing that i found out as i as i play the game um attributes are fine the ones that i want to talk about are actually the skills so let's talk a little bit about skills so, going from the top to bottom, Stealth allows a character of any character to attempt to avoid being seen or heard. Uh, you've, you, you've seen that, you've seen me actually use it in previous videos. Stealth is completely useless. Stealth is, is, is nice in order to scout ahead a little bit, I guess, but it's not entirely necessary. And you don't, like, any bonuses that you might get from being stealthed and then shooting from stealth, you could do that with zero stealth as well. So this is a wholly, pretty much useless thing, unless everybody in your party has it, and then there's, if you just want to completely avoid fights and just stealth through, then maybe. But why the hell would you do that? Unless you're running a solo rogue, in which case he would have stealth, and that's it. So yeah, stealth is completely useless. We're actually going to jump to the bottom and use survival. Survival allows the character to make better use of food and potion items. The higher the character's survival, the longer the duration. Uh, also used in conversation and scripted interactions that involve wilderness challenges or specialized information, but mostly it's the consumable duration. I have not used a single consumable. I will probably not use a single consumable. If we're talking about consumables, we can also move on to the subject of crafting. You could craft all kinds of stuff, not enchantment. Enchantments might be useful, but crafting is like, it's cute. It's a wonderful system to have in the game that most people never ever use, including myself because you just don't have to. I guess you could do it in order to get small bonuses, but whatever, it's not really necessary and survival is kind of useless. Mechanics is uh, the, um, the trap skill, which my, my, my main character has, as an example, has six, which is really high. Uh, for some reason I have stealth seven, but I'm, I'm gonna stop raising that one because it's useless. Mechanics, only one character in your party actually has to have this, and it doesn't have to be a rogue. It could be absolutely anyone that you choose. This, this character will now have a high mechanic score and then you're done. And then the two useful ones, which is Athletics and Lore. Now, Lore is cute because apparently every character can use scrolls. And that's spells, basically. So, and you, there are scrolls in the game, decently. So, it's pretty cool that every character can use scrolls if they have enough lore. And also, Lore is useful for your main character for interactions and all that stuff. So, on your main character, it's useful to have everything relatively high for these interactions. And it is your main character that does it, according to, at least according to what I know, that it's always your main character that does all these things. Uh, but Lore, yeah, it's cute. And then the one true skill that is actually really useful is Athletics, which increases your maximum fatigue. And that's really important as an example, Kana. Uh, which I got had at zero athletics, and I was immensely pissed off because he was tired instantly. And he goes, yeah, I'm so tired, and fatigue is terrible. Fatigue is something you really want to avoid. So athletics is incredibly useful for absolutely everybody. Both max fatigue goes up, and you get a minus for, for the combat fatigue gain. So athletics is really fucking important. But everything else is less. And the uh, skills are meh, not an amazing thing about this game, I'd say. Other than that, I, I about about Kana specifically, if we're already here, we could talk just a little bit about the, the chance. So there's verses, and you can actually, uh, there's verses and you can uh, just like assign them. I mean, you probably, you've probably seen this by now, but you could, each, each verse actually has a duration and a linger time, where in the linger time you already started another one, but it's, the effect stays. And basically these are friendly auras. Basically, these are friendly or aggressive auras. This is a faux aura that deals frightened to everybody. So, this is a really cool system. 
in theory. In practice, what I find happening is that I usually just want, because it's, I, it's not constant, I usually want just one of these. Maybe two. Maybe two. Like, this one, this one is actually really stupid. I actually would like, um, in most cases, just want this. And this is nice, so I, I might like combine, in this one I might combine both of them, so I, I'll have periods where they actually overlap, uh, which is nice, so you have two effects over one, which is the, the reason there's linger, because you need to have linger unless, if, if you don't have linger, then it's just one per, per charm, it means nothing else, per chant. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just one. As you can see, these are the things that I use. I usually, in order to, to kite, I always use the speed one, and in fights, I used to just use this because it's nice. I didn't really use this one. Uh, I got it. But now I found this, which is incredible. It decreases reload time and increases the speed of ranged attacks because everybody uses ranged attacks as far as I'm, for me, instead of, uh, except for, for Edir, who just stands there. So this is really nice. Probably I'll probably play like this, though, with just these four. Running away and switching to this once we're all standing, if, if Edir is just like, if, in the case of a door. So, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this this thing. I might, there might be further things that will feel a little bit better. Maybe the system will change a little bit, or uh, maybe we'll get other chants that are, other phrases that are interesting. But so far, it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. And, uh, yeah, Eddie just stands there. He just doesn't care. I just use this, and I have 120 deflection, and he's really strong. The thing is, I, I don't know how many times I actually loaded in the town that I got him, I'm assuming it happened at least a couple of times, which explains this ridiculous deflection score, uh, which is kind of ridiculous, because if you think about this, my accuracy is 40 with Edir, with uh, my main guy has 49, the rest of them have like 30-somethings, okay? So let's take the highest one, let's take 50, and then boost it up a little bit, let's say 70, which is really high, it's a really high accuracy rating. Let's say my enemies have 70, Edir is at 120, which means it's actually, they throw a 1d100, so it's a score of 1 to 100, and it gets minus 50 to start with, which is insane. So his deflection score is very high, probably because that happened a couple of times, which really explains why I've been having zero trouble at everything. <laughs> uh, it kind of sucks, there's nothing you can do about it now except for restart the entire game and make very sure that I don't do this bug, which clearly I'm not going to do, I'm just going to continue playing. It sucks to learn this. Um, though, in retrospect, I can't do anything about it now. Oh well. So that's been wh wh what I'm doing right now. I'm in Mudmar's Bridge, which is on the way to uh, Defiance Bay, and uh, that's actually the only thing that I have to do right now, because all the quests are travel with your companions or go in the Endless Paths, which I actually haven't done yet because I want to find a couple of more. I want to find a couple of more people before I go in there and start exploring and, you know, get a good party. I want to feel all the, the companions before I do this endless pass, which according to what I understand is actually endless. There's some part that isn't, but later it gets, like, it, it does get endless. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's an update for me. I'm probably gonna not do any more updates until the weekend where I'm probably gonna give you at least one one hour actual playthrough video, maybe two. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Buggy game. What you gonna do? See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.